Pre-production is a vital process in your projects, whether you're creating commercial video work or social media content. Prime Video asked me to create a vertical TikTok IG Reel style video to help them promote a new season of their TV show, Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan. I kind of dug myself a bit of a hole here just because I was Jason Derulo's creative director and helped him grow his TikTok account to 40 million. I know what it takes to put out that level of content. And I was like, sure. okay. This dude got some real volume and good content going. He and it's just David and I. Damn, <laughs> he cracked the code over there. I'm kind of stuck being the TikTok content creator. Yes, it can be fun and it gets you viral videos. Short form content isn't everything I want to be doing. But in this day and age, you always need to adapt and that's why we're here. Now there was a deadline to have the video approved and posted by the release day of the show, which was December the 21st, 2022. Now I'm going to come back to that date a little later in this video. Prime Video hinted on some themes they would like to implement into this video, such as action elements, a comedic element, a tech element. I love great choreographed fight scenes, chase scenes, and during the early stages of finding my love for film, I would try and shoot and direct my own little action sequences, as well as bringing that into my work with Jason Derulo. Now off the bat, I definitely wanted to involve a chase scene with some sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat as well as tech, and one film came to mind right off the bat, and that was the parkour chase scene at the start of Casino Royale, and I pulled some elements of this as inspiration for my project. So the idea for social media content is to capture people's attention within the first three to five seconds of your video, which is called the hook. Hey. Another cool trick for social media content that I like to do is to create a looping style video, which means when it gets to the end of the video, it almost seamlessly loops again to increase watch time and just make the overall flow of the video better. So for pre-production, the first thing I always do is jump into Milanote. It's basically just like a giant mood board for filmmakers, photographers, or really any project that you need to just put all your ideas in and help you structure the process. And that brings us to today's sponsor, just me. No one, no one's sponsoring me yet. So using Milanote, I started breaking down the entire project with my initial ideas, the budget and guidelines, what type of lighting and equipment I'm gonna be using, potential locations. Now to fit in with the deadlines of the TV show release, my only choice to shoot was that weekend. Also after that weekend, they needed a first draft to get it approved just in case there's any revisions or reshoots that needed to be done. The first things I did is find the perfect location. There was a local movie theater that I'd been to that had a really cool industrial outside as well as going downtown into a more urban city landscape. While I was there I was taking photos and videos and kind of imagining which frame would be best. I did take my camera with me along with the lenses that I was going to be using and that was Rokinon's DSX Cine lenses, the 35mm getting those medium and close-up shots as well as their super wide 14mm. I use this for all the establishing shots, they're lightweight, weather sealed so they're really great for these run and gun type of shoots. So with the time and budget I shot this video by myself using my black magic vertically mounted with my Devon Graham signature glide cam as well as my Sennheiser mic which I'm using now. I think it's a great mic. It picked up what I needed to and it got the point across. I'm trying! Now, as part of the script, there's three characters. There's the main secret agent, a villain, and also the chief, who's basically like an M character in James Bond. What exactly are you implying? A couple months before this project, I met these two dudes at the gym who came to mind when I was thinking about the role. I asked them if they wanted to be in one of my videos, and they were like, we've never acted in the past, uh, but we're, we're willing to help you out. And that's everything I needed to hear. And because I just moved into the area, my wife and I have been talking to a few real estate agents, and then one of them came came to mind for the video as well. The project was coming up and I really needed help and I asked her if she'd be willing to act in one of my films. There's not that many lines and I didn't really hint it was for Amazon Prime because I didn't want to make any of them feel too overwhelmed as well. And thankfully she also said yes. And I knew with a little bit of direction these guys would be able to pull it off even though none of them have acted a day in their lives. The secret agent headquarters was another location that I had to find. I was going back and forth on what types of places we could rent and nothing was just hitting. I couldn't really find anything especially with the time that we had now never underestimate the power of what you have in your area i did something called an escape room it's basically these built out sets well you can 
think of it that way as a filmmaker or a photographer, you do these kind of missions and puzzles to get out of the room. And there was a local one in my area and I decided to just drive there and see if I can get in touch with the manager. The importance of actually physically being in a space is crucial because there was one space online, it looked great. But then when I went there in person, the space was way too small to be able to put any lights in and to really shoot the scenes that we would like. Now imagine if I locked that space down without visually seeing it, I would have got there with all my gear and my actor in the morning and realized that this isn't gonna work and I don't know what I would have done. And I found another escape room. The guy who ran this place was super nice. He showed me all of the rooms and he opened up one room and I was like, this is the one. Failing to plan is planning to fail. I'm gonna let that sit with you for a second. So it all worked out perfect. I had my location set. I had my actors ready to go. Using Milanote, I had to write down props I would need. And one of the props that I needed to buy was a briefcase. So I jumped on Amazon and bought two. One that was really cheap and one that was better looking and more expensive. Now, the reason that I bought two was because I wanted to do this one particular shot inspired by Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction, which is the trunk shot. So the only real way to get this type of shot of my agent looking into the briefcase as he opens it was to break one of the briefcases into two pieces and hold it over the lens of the camera. Joe and I honed in on our story of being this epic on foot chase scene where we're gonna see the secret agent chasing after the villain who has stolen this briefcase. Now, the audience doesn't know what's inside the briefcase, but naturally they're gonna wonder, you know, what could be in it, and that's what's gonna hook them in. Ideally, this was gonna be a single day shoot, yet with the actors and the times they were available, I had to shoot one sequence on Saturday and one on the Sunday. So the first shoot was a morning shoot at that escape room at the secret headquarters location. I really wanted to play with light and see how creative I could get. So I had some tube lights, some practical lights, my main key light. We were still in a tighter space, so the light source didn't have to be super strong. Lighting the back wall behind her, I had a tube light and there was a lamp behind her that was just purely a prop so I actually put one of my smaller RGB lights and just sat it right inside the lamp there just to kind of give it that ambience and a little bit of a backlight now I wanted to extend that lamp backlight to kind of give her more of an edge light and a hair light so off to the side I had another tube light just kind of grazing the side of her body just to give her a little more dimension in the shot now on the table where she was located there was another prop light that didn't work so I actually stuck another tube light just to beam some light down to make it look like it was on so other than that i also had my little haze machine i would just pump some haze into the room just to create some more atmosphere and that's pretty much how we got this look i had a two camera setup for this one i had my 6k as the main camera and then on sticks i had my pocket 4k capturing those side medium close-up shots all in one take. That for me was crucial on time because I spent majority of the time going through lines and directing the actor's emotion. Keep your eyes down and then the last two words kind of pop up. We can't afford to lose this information. That one is you listening like, what's going on? Do you have it? One, two, two, one, two, two. Say it faster so it's like he doesn't even have time to comprehend it. A little more aggressive. I'm yelling at Always him. Always yelling at him. Well, don't just stand there. Well, don't just stand there. Is any of that usable? Oh my God, I'm that's a wrap. You killed it. it. Super proud of you. Good work. Within about an hour, I think, we got all our lines done. Shout out to Sydney. Thank you for coming through. I appreciate you just diving into this and helping me out. It wouldn't have been possible without you. The night after that very first shoot, I started editing and chopping down the footage because I knew Sunday I'll be shooting as well and I wanted to be as sufficient as possible. Now, day two, the action scene. <laughs> Having the shot list and the script was crucial in making sure I was getting the right shots. When you're doing a smaller shoot and you're juggling a lot of different roles, you can tend to forget or miss things that you really needed to get. The first shot barging through the door, I had one spot in mind that I thought was going to be perfect, but just with how they barged through the door, it actually made it very difficult. There was a couple steps right outside the door, which made it very awkward and hard for these guys to just run out. I think after like 10 tries, we're like, okay, this is too much time wasting. We need to find another door. Thankfully, because I was location scouting, I did find a backup door and that backup door ended up being perfect and we continued the scene up the staircase and I'm capturing audio the entire time just to have that ambient sound just so that everything felt right and we moved to location two. So we drove out to downtown Phoenix to this parking garage, went up to the rooftop and that was where we were going to have this mini action scene where the secret agent tackles the villain to the ground. Now the original script was he was supposed to tackle the secret agent and the 
briefcase he was holding was supposed to go flying in the air and almost fly over and off the roof. But because of where the staircase was and the way we shot it, visually it was like impossible for the case to go that far. It would look very unnatural and it just wouldn't work. So we opted in for just a tackle. He drops the case by his side. I didn't really think it was going to be that difficult to shoot a tackle scene to the ground. As we tried to attempt it, we could see that, hey, this isn't going to work. I wanted to shoot this like wide shot where you see the agent just pound the guy, smack him to the ground. Just this full jump, lunge, boom, all in one take. But that's not doable. We didn't have full mats. We had no mattresses. It was just cement. So we broke down that tackle scene in a few different shots. We cut to a wide shot of seeing him running and jumping. Then I cut to a close up where they're actually just standing still. And I got the secret agent to just jump and grab him as hard as you can. And then all I got them to do to sell that he's been tackled to the ground was I got them both to act like they've just fallen. For doing stunts and things like that, there's always work around so your actors don't get hurt. Especially especially in something like this, you can't really control the environment. You don't have time, you don't have the budget and the coordination. The final shot of the hit and the briefcase falling was a one take shot where Bryce, the secret agent, runs, picks up the briefcase, boom, secret agent then radios back to headquarters asking for the code of the case. Now the code of the case was a very crucial part of the script because the code of the case was the exact dates the TV show was gonna be released. One, two, two, one, two, two. Joe and I kind of built the script around it as this comedic scene of the secret agent not understanding or forgetting the numbers of the code. Two, one, two, two. One, two, two. Two? Two, one. Oh, okay. Two, one, one, two. No, one, two. Just to create more emphasis in those numbers specifically. Once he finally puts the code in, he opens up the briefcase, the suspense builds, and we see a VFX shot of almost like a hologram of the Jack Ryan poster there. So that was kind of the concept of the entire video. Now again, going back to the importance of looping videos for social media, Joe and I came up with a concept where it's this almost infinity loop in the video, no matter how many times you watch it, it's just this constant chase. Right before the video ends, we're gonna see the villain get up and steal the case back, creating this endless back and forth with the briefcase, you know, an endless chase. Now for that final shot to loop into the video, I got the secret agent to kind of run right into camera. As he was running into the camera, I could perfectly loop it to them, once again, barging through the doors. Those were cut to a specific point. So when the video loops, you don't really know it's looping. I really enjoyed shooting this with my friends. They all did an incredible job. It was a good learning experience as well. I realized that so many things didn't necessarily 100% go to plan, but the reason I was able to continue the shoot was because I planned and I was able to go, okay, cool, that's fine. We can do this instead of that. Without the storyboards, without the shot list and the gear list, I don't think I would have been able to pull this off with the time that I had. Now there was a couple VFX shots in this one where he opens up the briefcase and it's a hologram of the movie poster. Now this was around the time I just moved into Da Vinci so I was still getting used to things like fusion. The first thing I did was edit up the main rough cut with a super basic crappy VFX shot which I then sent to the brand along with my notes saying don't judge the VFX shot. It's gonna look good I promise you at the end. The brand got back to us. They said they loved it. I then had an extra few days to get the VFX shot right. I want to give a huge shout out to Casey Ferris and Billy Ripka. I feel like their tutorials are some of the best out there right now for DaVinci Resolve. I just want to rehash if you've got tight budgets, small crews, you can definitely do it. But I think pre-production is such a vital process for this in being able to handle everything all at once. Now that I had to dive in the deep end and create those visual effects, I'm now able to know what I can do next time and get better and better moving forward. If you have any questions or anything you're unclear of, anything you want to know, maybe it's the gear, the specific lighting that I used or how I edit it in fusion let me know drop it in the comments i'm curious to get your guys' thoughts anyway if you enjoyed the video chuck it a like leave me a comment subscribe if you wanna and yeah take it easy